what it's like studying history at uni. Um, scene one, take one. <laughs> hey guys, I'm here with Ellie today. And so Ellie is a friend of mine from uni. You may recognize Ellie from some of my other videos, so you should watch them too. They're okay. Average to mediocre. <laughs> <laughs> we both did history together. That is how we became best friends forever and life partners and lovers and... Oh my god, your hand's really cool. I need that. I'm so <laughs> I often get a lot of questions from people saying, I'm thinking about going to uni, like, what should I do? Like, what's history like? Um, what's University of Birmingham like? Which is where we went. Um, and so we thought we'd just make a general video talking about what it's like to study history at uni. For you Americans, that's college. I tweeted out what you wanted to know, and you guys want to know stuff, so that's good. Did you develop skim reading skills at or before uni? I did at. You scan a whole kind of two pages and you pick out a couple of things. I think I developed that more at uni because mm -hmm. you need it. You're reading so much, you don't have time to read an entire book. How many texts per essay did you read? I would Loads. say like... 10 was good. I think I'd probably do more because I, I read quite a few articles yeah. as opposed to books. I don't know, they're more specific. Books yeah. as well, you literally just read intro, conclusion, and then one relevant chapter. How do you respond to people who say things like, oh, but isn't history already known? Oh, history. <laughs> no! It's not about yeah. knowing facts. Yeah, it's not about facts. History is constantly changing because we understand events in one way and then something comes along and we're like, oh, actually, maybe it See, happened slightly differently. Yeah. Why we think what happened, what happened in the way it did, the way we see it. And how did the people at the time understand what was happening? Not what we think of it, but how did, what did they think about and it? And why did they think that about it? What topics in history did you study? Ellie, what did you do? Uh, my favourite was probably to do with Orientalism and interpretations of other countries and other cultures and interactions between different cultures. So that's what I did my dissertation on. Travellers to the Middle East, that kind of thing. Obviously you guys know that I studied a lot of sexual history. Me and Ellie did a module together on the history of homosexuality, which was fascinating. Mm -hmm. Another one of my favourite modules was the Tudors in a Hundred Objects. And it, it was like a cultural and material history of the Tudors and it was like a lot of museum study stuff combined with history and material culture mm. and it was fascinating because now every time I go to a museum I'm like why did they place this there and why did they choose this specific object and why does this one have a caption and this one doesn't what are they trying mm -hmm. to do here and what are they trying to make us what think it, yeah. what is the story that they're trying to tell is there like a specific direction that you have to travel around the museum or is it like free for all like I literally <laughs> like, go to museums now I'm like <laughs> 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 Why? <laughs> Why? How bad is third year? Not very. Third year was my best year. I had modules I really enjoyed and I think that made a massive... And the tu the tutors I had in third year were so, so good. brilliant. Do you have post-graduation depression when you realise that you won't be studying such an awesome subject anymore? That is a very loaded question. I think I don't get like depressed about it, mm. but I definitely miss it. I really miss just learning mm. so many interesting new things. I feel a bit um, unstimulated sometimes. Yeah. I've not read it yet, but I bought this. A little gay history. Got pictures and everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's got pictures! What's that? Oh. Early desires. What is this? This is the oldest known representation of a couple making love in the world. Ah! ah. It was found in a cave in the Judean desert. Oh, the pebble depicts look, a look, couple look, face look. to face. It's a couple having sex. One person has wrapped their arms around the shoulders of their lover in an embrace. See, now that, we've just learned something. That's what it's like being that's a history what we student. Miss. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. see something, we're like, what is this? <laughs> is there a massive difference between studying it at different unis or do they all offer similar things? They will offer different things depending yeah. on what the tutors are. But I feel like every university offers so many modules. Yeah that there will be, There'll be something, something you, like. you like. You discover what you like. The beautiful thing is, is that even though me and Ellie went to the same university to do history, so we have come out with completely different history degrees and completely different specialisms, mm -hmm. which I think is cool. Like, no one has the same history degree. How does the courses work? Is there a choice, for example, on what time period you want to focus on? In our first year, we did, like, a complete survey to 2000. course. Yeah. You'd go through a few hundred oh my years God. in an hour, and then you'd feel a bit... 
sick. Yeah. So we had like two medieval modules, two modern modules. This is when I realised that I hated medieval history. And mm-hmm. both of us never went there again. I think the point of it is to show you new things that yeah, you haven't yeah, studied yeah. before. I came out of it and I was like, oh my god, I have this timeline in my head. And then in second and third year, you it's like free for all. You just pick the modules that you want to study. If your laptop logs on fast enough. <laughs> oh my god, those are the most stressful days ever. Day it's like that you had to a festival ticket, oh. but worse because it would decide your fate for an entire year. <laughs> and the places went like that. Yeah, on the popular modules. So you had there was a day and a time that it went live, and you had to go online and you had to click on the module that you wanted to do. I love history at A level, but I'm worried I'll take it at degree level and realise it's not my passion. Help. University history is very different to A level history, but for the better. But also, actually, if you don't enjoy it, you can always change your degree it's a lot more theory based it's quite philosophical as well actually because you have to look at yourself and look at what in your life has made you think and see things the The way you do the world the type of history that we studied really put emphasis on removing yourself from your worldview decentering yeah decenter yourself and putting yourself into the shoes of the people in the past that you're studying not judging the people in the past like that's weird that's wrong why did they do that but being like okay what made them think and feel yeah. that kind of way but you can't kind of judge them you yeah. just have to look at we it live in a time and try and understand yeah. why they did it instead of being like oh can't believe they did that because we do things that in a hundred years time they'll look back and be like why did they do why that why did they do that but right now we think this is this is right and this, this is, is true and this is real but there's no such thing be prepared for just having the whole world like crumble at your feet if you and around history. you and including you yeah. and then you've got to kind of glue it all together and then you rebuild the yourself like literally gluing dust together do you think there are biased representations in historical writing in terms of gender racial and cultural stereotypes yes, yes. there is no such thing <laughs> as unbiased history historian. like you can try you can try you can try but I don't think you'll ever get to the point where mm-hmm. you can say this is a hundred percent objective yeah. would you say that you found it more interesting studying modern history or earlier periods modern <laughs> what are your favourite centuries 19th and the 16th I kind of like 19th and 17th I enjoyed medieval history but oh. it's very different to modern history because so different your the sources written are sources different. are completely different yeah. the way people write about it is completely different and all the names are the same it's really confusing <laughs> all of the different Targaryen kings like Aegon Aeron Aeris R- like oh, Rhaegar Aeron Aaron, Eamon, like, it's, that's medieval history. Like, what about these names? Game of Thrones really happened. It's medieval history. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. The wall is Hadrian's Wall and beyond the wall is Scotland. Any tips on studying at Birmingham would be fab um, because I found an unconditional offer to go there. Woo! Congrats. Do not walk under the clock tower when it rings because it's bad luck and you'll fail your degree. University of Birmingham <laughs> superstition. We're not superstitious at all. <laughs> I've never walked under it. Even when, even when it's not ringing, I don't walk under it. But yeah, it rings did. four times an hour because it rings at o- o'clock, o'clock. Quarter past, half past, quarter two. So just don't. The Cadbury Research Library. <gasps> Yes! It's like all of the archives that the University of Birmingham owns. So our friend George was um, doing an internship with the library and he was like, you know, searching some stuff and he saw something that was like Havelock Ellis and he texted me being like, aren't you studying Havelock Ellis? Isn't he like a sexologist or something? So I was studying Ellis for my dissertation and it turned out that at the University of Birmingham we have Ellis's diaries and... Handy. How much is it like history class in high school? Not. Not. Next. <laughs> Do you know how I see the progression of history? Okay. As in how it's taught. So in high school you learn like, oh this happened, this happened, here's some dates and names. You learn it, you write about it. Then sixth form you do about historians and you say this historian said this but Mm. this historian said this and you kind of make arguments and then university it's all about what do you think yeah these historians say this yeah they use Mm -hmm, this information mm -hmm. but what information are you going to use to make your point yeah yeah you're the historian now what do you think yeah you have to pretend to be an adult why should I study history other than enjoyment what kind of jobs can you get through that degree YouTuber (laughs) I feel like with a history degree a lot of people say this and it sounds really cheesy but I feel like you actually can get um, quite a range of jobs because you do have quite a few transferable skills yeah publishing teaching research writing or you can get a masters then a PhD and just become a history lecturer 
become a historian. Become cool. a historian for life. You can't. Being a historian is a profession. How much do you plan essays? <laughs> I usually do very minimal plan, and it seems to pay off. But I feel like this changes at a higher level. I feel like planning loads helps. In our exams, you'd have about an hour per essay ish, and I probably spend, spend like about 15 10, minutes 15 minutes planning. planning. It makes your argument so much more succinct. But also, like for course I planning essays, handy. um, I plan a lot like I'm I plan like <laughs> or every point that I'm going to make in each paragraph planning documents I had for my dissertation was ridiculous I had oh, this okay. like huge word document which is all of my notes it, it was searchable yeah. so I could be like I need to That's find handy. something about um, homosexuality so I just like type in homosexuality and I'd be like okay there are all the points about homosexuality control um, F saved my life control F <laughs> uh, <laughs> praise the control F <laughs> I had a notebook that I carried around with me and every time I thought of something cool yes. I'd write it down and that was my plan yeah. I make friends with your tutors as well because they're good fun they say to you like so email me anytime they have and so like, much information open. in their brains as well yeah talk to it's, them a lot it's incredible what we were saying about studying history at uni basically like blowing your mind a little bit and making you question everything. We did this module, a compulsory module in second year called History in Theory and Practice, which is basically how we study history, why we study history, what is history, okay. how should we study history. It was amazing. Ama it was so brilliant. We had a but whole module and lecture on what is time. We concluded that it but was timey, wimey, wibbly, wibbly wobbly, wobbly stuff. stuff. I quoted John Green in my exam for that module. I remember sitting in David's office um, when we were talking about history and theory and practice and I started coming out with one of this random stuff about how the Little Mermaid is really postmodern. <laughs> She's using um, a oh, fork yeah. as a hairbrush and that's her truth. Like. The fork is being used as a hairbrush, its functionality is a hairbrush, it brushes her hair, so like that's what it is, until someone comes along and says to her, mm -hmm. actually no, that's not a hairbrush, you use it to eat, to eat food, so that truth then dies, yes, yeah. and the new truth is born, and it's like, and then Hannah curled up in a ball and cried for about seven days. Thank you guys for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. And let us know in the comments if you have any more tips or info on studying history. You know, follow Ellie on Twitter because she I haven't tweeted much recently. But when you do, it's very funny. Oh, thanks. And she often tweets really interesting history political stuff. Um, I hope this has been somewhat useful and I'll see you guys soon. Bye! Say bye. <laughs>